Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello, folks. I'm Mike. This is Ink Dependence, and this is Ink we're talking about today. This is IWI. You can see it right there on the box. Color of Nature right here. F great snow, fountain pen ink, so many word. Uh, this is <laughs> given to me by Van S. Pens for review. Uh, the back, I can't read. Presumably, there will be a bottle and a little pamphlet inside. So let's get in here. Uh, on the flap, it says, right from your heart. I have a bunch of these IWIs to try out, actually. This is just the first one of several. But she, uh, Lisa Van Ness, did give me the bottle on this one so that I could show the bottle when I show the other inks as well. So uh, here's the, the label. This is a bottle that's kind of, that reminds me of the bottle that uh, a lot of German companies use. It's a pretty, pretty solid little bottle design. Nice cap, pretty, pretty solid. We have uh, this paper thing, which was connected here and here. I, I think I'm going to just like torn that bit off and then pasted it back down. Um, inside the bottle, very easy bottle to fill from. No problems there. Good threads, good seal. I like all that. None of this leaked at all uh, in transit, which is nice. All right. On the bottle, though, it doesn't actually tell you how much ink is in here. This is a 30 mil bottle. And these go for 12 bucks over at Van S Pens. Ah, here's the other thing, which is a little pamphlet. Uh, IWI, Color of Nature, inspired by Mother Nature, and then it has the 24 colors in this series, which are the 24 solar terms representing annual changes of seasons and helping, which help to guide agricultural activities through observing the position of the sun, which is, uh, that's what it says on the Van S. Penn's website, and this is pretty, uh, this is pretty cool. I have several of these, and some of them are really fun to say, like, grain in ear, and uh, walking, a uh, waking of insects. Like these are these are a fun thing to, to have. All right, so we'll uh, see how these go. I'll put this over here. Here's what it looks like on some paper. I W I Color of Nature. This is a really nice uh, sort of dark blue. It's got a little bit of a I don't know. It looks a little bit matte, a little bit dusky on the the swatch here. No, uh, nothing crazy here in terms of qualities. You get uh, some fairly mild shading. I see a little bit of it here now. This is another ink that really kind of depends on the paper, and you're going to really want a good paper for this one. On this Rhodia, uh, I didn't have any problems really any in here. I did have some bleed through on the swatch, but that's a lot of ink. Uh, even so, you don't see a whole lot of that with Rhodia, so this ink is a little bit on the bleedy side. It's not great on the copy paper. This is my... Uh, 20 pound, 30% recycled staples copy paper. Uh, and it's not great on here. This is just it's not a very good paper. So it's not a huge surprise. But you do have, uh, you see here, it started out actually very, very dark because I think it had dried up in the nib a little bit. It didn't stop writing. It did write, but you can see it was very thin here. And then as it gets going, it <laughs> this is the same nib, right? Uh, right here. And by the end, it is completely different from the beginning. That's just, it had dried up a little bit in that Kiridas. Uh, and then the other uh, pen that I put it in was a Rotring Core. So in this nib, this is a Platinum Kiridas with a medium nib. These medium nibs, in my experience, I have two of them, uh, usually run pretty wet. So I wasn't uh, this was not a good pairing because this is a wet ink and this is a wet nib and so it wants to bleed and feather on uh, lots of papers. It does well if you have a good paper. So using like a Rhodia or something like that, your wet pen and wet ink will work just fine. Uh, I decided I wanted to try to put it in something with a smaller nib so I grabbed one of my Rotring cores out of the case. I hadn't used this one yet. I was pretty excited to use this blue. I don't know, it kind of kind of matches. I don't really do matchy stuff but this one called to me a little bit. Uh, this is however an XL nib. You can see there on the nib, it says XL. They only made these in XL and XS, and almost all of mine are XSs, and I totally thought this one was too. XL is more or less like a broad, and XS is a fine, or sorry, not a broad. This is more like a medium. I don't know, medium, maybe a broad. It's up in there. And usually pretty average in terms of wetness. Uh, I've used a bunch of these cores over the years. Uh, I think in this uh, this nib, it's still actually a little bit too uh, a little bit too wet. Maybe I think for a lot of your sort of medium or lower end papers, you're going to want either a very dry nib or a very fine nib for this ink. But it has a lot of uh, it has a lot of good character, and I like the color of this. So I say if you have a nib that is dry or you have a, a nib that is very fine, grab this ink. It's going to be pretty cool. All right, let's uh, go ahead and do our water drop test, and then we'll take a look at the chromatography, and we'll look at it against some other inks here. So let's get this 
get this going. Throw some water on there. Pretty good. All right, I see a little bit of it moving, but actually more of it staying behind than I anticipated. I figured this ink would not be particularly water resistant, but uh, a little bit of something. Let's see what happens when we dry it up or soak it up here. All right, so uh, a bunch of the blue came off, but it's still totally readable, which is pretty nice. Uh, I like that in an ink. This, you do see some of the violet uh, component here. Just stuck around perfectly well. So if you dump your coffee on this, and sometimes people dump coffee on things, then uh, you will want something that can be recovered. And that's absolutely recoverable. So I'm not sure if I want to call this water resistant, but it's got a little bit of resistance. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Better than I was expecting. Then here is the chromatography, which I think is particularly pretty. It really wants to be... There we go. Let's flatten this a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this is a really pretty chromatography. Obviously started here and bled up the page, which is what it is supposed to do, or up this little sheet. Uh, you have this violet, which is actually what stuck around in our, our copy before, and then this bright blue line up here at the top, which, you know, you see this bright blue line on a lot of different things, like there it is in my Cheerio water bus, there it is in the top of Autumn Forest. Uh, those are the only two other ones that I have sitting here that have that blue line, but that blue component is very nice and, uh, oops, wrong one. That blue component is very nice and, uh, and I like that. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So let's look at it next to, uh, oh, and on some different papers. I almost forgot that whole thing. So here it is in my inky fingers currently inked. This is, uh, this is wheat straw paper. Uh, there is the roaching core entry which I think looks really good and it looks nice on this paper. It felt good on this paper. Didn't have any uh, bleeding or feathering or anything. As long as you're using this on a good paper, I think you'll be totally fine. And there it is from the Curidas. You can see it's darker, but also worked perfectly well on here. I didn't get any weird bleed or anything, did I? No, nothing at all. So yeah, keep this on a good paper and you're gonna be happy with it, but keep it away from the bad stuff. Well, did get like a tiny feather there. I think that's I think that's about it. Nothing to write home about. No big deal. Then my ink journal, which is full. I am done with this ink journal. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> uh, this is Tomoe River paper, of course. Here is the Kiridas entry. Looks very nice on uh, on Tomoe River here. You bleed through or anything? No, of course not. It's Tomoe River. Uh, worked very nicely on there. And then. Uh, this is what I'm replacing my ink journal with because I don't think they make the Tomoe River ink journals anymore uh, because Tomoe River is hard to find. But this is a Galen Everyday Book, which is also a Tomoe River paper. And there is the Great Snow from the Rotring Core, which I put in, I don't know, a week ago or so. And uh, yeah, looks great. Works really well on there. So keep it on the good paper. You're going to like this ink. It's a cool color. All right. Next up, let's look at some comparisons. Here it is on a Colodex card, which I like a lot. I think that's a great color. And I went through and found some stuff that's kind of close, but nothing's an exact duplicate, which is nice. So this Visconti blue, and then on the other side, Omos blue. Uh, Visconti blue, I think uh, you can still get. Omos blue, of course, uh, is no more, but uh, a little bit brighter, the Omos blue. And Visconti blue is also a little bit brighter. It lacks this sort of this has got a great depth of tone to it. I don't know really exactly know how to explain it, but it just looks good. Uh, here is Kala Flag Blue, which is fairly close. You can see down in here, you get a lot of this character, but it's a different, it's got some other stuff going on as well. And then uh, another Kala ink, this is Chiming Lake. These are both dye-based inks. They're not their pigmented inks. And this one's pretty close, Chiming Lake. I haven't used this one yet, but uh, pretty good. I got those, those from Sugar Inks. And then lastly, uh, it looks a little bit like this one, although not as dark. Midnight Blue was one of the, the first two inks I think I got from... First two inks I think I got. I got this one in Lake Placid. I think those are my first two inks. Maybe Black Cherry, but they're all private reserve because that was all you could get back then. Uh, this is the, the new formula of Midnight Blue, and it's a little bit like this. It's darker, though. You can get some of these tones over here, but this one's, this one's darker. I think your closest one is probably going to be this one. Uh, Chiming Lake from Kala. All right, so there you go. That is IWI Great Snow. A pair of blue pens I have that in. Weird, right? Uh, check this out uh, over at Van S Pens. Tell them I said hi, and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.